Hello, and welcome to another video. I'm Nima Pollard, a developer advocate here at DocuSign. In this screencast, I'm going to show you DocuSign Monitor and the Monitor API. First, let's talk about the motivation behind DocuSign Monitor. Unauthorized activity can be a major contributor to data breaches. A recent Panaman Institute a study of more than 500 major organizations found that 7% of malicious breaches were caused by insider activity. An additional 19% of those breaches were directly attributed to stolen or compromised credentials. And the problematic activity doesn't even need to be malicious. 23% of all data breaches were simply attributed to human error that put the organization at risk. This is why premier DocuSign customers have been asking for greater insights and automation to help them guard against malicious activity. So DocuSign has developed a new solution to meet this growing need. DocuSign Monitor provides near real-time visibility into account activity to help our customers safeguard their agreements. Monitor tracks your e-signature web, mobile, and third-party integration account activity across your enterprise. It uses advanced analytics to detect potential threats, whether from outsiders or rogue insiders, with rule-based alerts. It provides ready access to in-depth data points to help security teams investigate the activity that triggered the alert. And it helps administrators respond quickly to verify threats, before they can cause significant damage. All of this is possible because Monitor tracks more than 40 types of events related to your e-signature account activity, such as user logins, security settings, and envelope transfers. Monitor comes with pre-built alerts for common types of suspicious activity. For example, if a user deletes five or more envelopes in an hour, Monitor automatically notifies your team so they can take appropriate action. Alerts triggered by user activity could be malicious or innocuous, which is why Monitor also provides in-depth information so teams can thoroughly investigate incidents and respond appropriately. In the Alert History tab, security teams can see a complete list of alerts by time, alert type, and user to help identify trends that could lead to system vulnerabilities. Admins and security professionals can also view event details such as IP address, location, and activity to help determine whether an alert was triggered by an attack or authorized activity. Monitor also includes an API that can deliver all of these telemetry data directly to your existing security stack, integrating easily with software like Splunk, Tableau, and Power BI. This lets your team work with the tools they're already familiar with and gives them flexibility to tailor dashboards and alerts to your company policies based on your industry, regulatory requirements, and other factors. We're also developing an app for Splunk, which will make it even easier for teams to integrate Monitor into their security stack. Using Monitor, your organization can detect potential external and internal threats faster with rule-based alerts. It helps security teams investigate incidents thoroughly with ready access to in-depth data about the activity that triggered the alert. And administrators can respond quickly with decisive action to mitigate threats before they cause significant damage. I am now going to show you DocuSign Monitor in action. When you first log into your DocuSign admin dashboard, by default, you are not going to have the Monitor app enabled for your demo account. If you want that to be enabled for you, you're going to have to reach out to us at dsmonitorfeedback at docusign.com and provide us with your account quit. And we will enable DocuSign Monitor for your account. And again, that's dsmonitorfeedback 
at DocuSign.com. Now, once you have Monitor enabled in your demo account, the first thing that you want to do is to go ahead and enable the feature for your organization. So if you click on Configure Monitor, I already have it enabled for my account, but you're gonna to have to enable it for your account first time the monitor is enabled for your demo account. Now, in this view, this is where you're gonna see a snapshot of all the events that have been happening in your organization. In my case, I have 92 envelope sent, and you can see the region where they happened. Alert list, this is where you enable the alerts that you want to be enabled for your account. I have everything enabled in mind currently. And alert list is where the alerts are going to show up. I don't have any alerts right now in my account, and that's why you don't see any of them uh, listed over there. Next up, I'm going to show you how to set up the DocuSign Monitor plugin for Splunk. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and install the plugin for Splunk and our add-on plugin as well. Once you have these two plugins installed, you want to go ahead and add the data inputs that we're going to need. The plugin themselves will add three data input categories. You're going to see one for users, monitor, and accounts. You want to go ahead and add one new data point to each one of these. I've already done this, so I'm just going to show you the fields that you need to populate. The user ID is the ID of the user that is impersonating the administrator in your organization. And integrator key and RSA private key are self-explanatory. Now, the monitor data point takes in the exact same field, so I'm not going to show it here. However, with the users, there is a slight difference in compared to what I showed you before. With the users, uh, there's an API server URL where you have to update the account ID to the account ID of your organization. So please remember to update that. Otherwise, you will not be able to get the users that you have in your organization. Now, once you have your data input set up, the next thing to do is to go ahead and set up your search macros. Similarly to the data inputs, after you install the plugin, you're going to see three search macros being populated here. One for account data, one for monitor data, and lastly, one for users. What you want to do is to go ahead and make sure the definition is updated so that the index is pointing to your index. In my case, it's main, and make sure the source type is pointing to DocuSign accounts, monitor, or users, depending on the macro that you are setting up. Now, after you have the search macro set up, the last thing to do is go ahead and run our lookup lists. We have two local lists that you need to go ahead and generate. First, you want to change the app to our add-on for Splunk, DocuSign underscore TA. And let's change the filter to everything. You're going to see two scripts, one for generating user list lookup and one for generate account lookup. So you want to go ahead and run both of these scripts. And these two will go ahead and populate the account and the user information that is, that is inside your account. Please keep in mind that these lookups need to be regenerated every time there's a change in data. So you may want to run them on a schedule. And that's all the setup. Let's check out the plugin now. OK. OK, let me run the latest data. And perfect. Yeah, so you see that in my account in the last 30 days, um, I have 11 documents that have been uh, downloaded. I only have two users, both of which uh, happen to be the admins. And you can see where the documents and the envelopes originated from, which is mainly in the US. And this is the IP address of where the envelopes were accessed. And this is the list of the events. Obviously, I don't seem to have a lot of activity happening in my account in the last 30 days, but your dashboard is going to look a lot more um, lively as you have more events populated. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that if you just want access to the events and you don't want to be using a Splunk or our built-in DocuSign dashboard, you can always call the endpoint directly uh, to get all the events that are available in your organization. We're going to have another video 
uh, with a deeper dive on how to use this endpoint and some of the SDKs that we're releasing soon. So stay tuned for that in the near future. And this is it. Thank you so much for watching the video today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And please don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the future videos that we'll be releasing on this subject. Thank you so much. Goodbye.